Welcome to our Easter Sunday celebration. It's good to have you with us. I know this is slightly strange times. We're gathering from different places, some people coming online, some people calling in on their telephones. However you've got here today, it's good to have you with us and to share this joyous time. So this has been put together by members of the Strathclyde circuit. So again, you'll be hearing from lots of different people throughout this video. Um, we've also got a sing-along happening this evening at 5.30. So if you can join us again for that, that would be lovely. But for now, I'll hand on to the next person. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Love is come again. Love has risen like the wheat that springs up green. New life. New life for all. Risen Lord Jesus, we come to you this day to celebrate. We come to rejoice in your, in the joy of your resurrection. The stone has been rolled away, death has been defeated. You have overcome all the power of darkness. Thank you for all you have done for us and now fill us with your joy and assurance. Fill us with your resurrection hope. Amen. And now we invite you to sing hymn number 313. Thine be the glo thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Let's sing. When we have that question, what does the resurrection mean for me? I couldn't help but think of all the technology that has been, um, I want to say, thrown at me in the last couple of weeks. And the question has always been, um, how do you do that? Um, and how do they do that? And maybe we think something like that about the resurrection. How does God do that? How does Christ come back from the dead? How does he heal the blind and um, make the, the lame walk? How does he manage to come to earth and be born um, fully human? 
How does our God create the universe out of nothing? They're all the how do words, how do questions. And yet the question is not how, but why? Uh, why would Christ uh, come back from the dead? Why would Christ heal the blind and um, heal the lame? Why would Christ be born among us fully human? Why would God create the universe? And the answer is love. Love and relationship. God always wanting to have a relationship with his people, with myself. God always wanting to have the best for me. Um, God always wanting to be alongside me to show that he knows what it is to be fully human. He knows my frailty. He knows my weakness. And why would he come and bring resurrection life? That he would be with me always and that whatever happens and whoever I am and whatever mess I make of life, um, he makes all things new. And that I can always be assured of that relationship in the here and now and in the hereafter. Why the resurrection? Um, the resurrection is all about God's love. God's love for me, God's love for you, and God's love for those who are yet to know his love. Let us share the Lord's Prayer in a manner and a language we feel the most comfortable. We will be led by Janet. O oh Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. What the resurrection means to me. I used to think of the resurrection as a one-off event and one that I would only personally experience after my physical death. However, I've come to believe that it's a continuous process that Christians are meant to experience in the here and now, as well as the there and then. When the stone was rolled away from the tomb, I suspect that it didn't roll away in one smooth motion, but it was bit by bit with a lot of shoving and grunting. I love the image of the light creep being bursting through the ever-widening gap, chasing away the darkness in the tomb bit by bit, and finally, completely. All through my Christian life, I have known resurrection taking place in my life, and it's come in many different guises. Seeing things in a new light, letting go of past hurts, being less of a bigot, finding a sense of purpose, knowing that I am loved, being embraced by my Christian family, learning new truths and seeing things from an eternal perspective rather than being governed by the ticking of the clock and the turning of the calendar pages. One of the great sadnesses for me is that many of the lovely people I've met on my journey died seemingly too soon and I would have loved to have spent more time with them. Resurrection tells me that I will have plenty of time to catch up with them. Sometimes though life as a habit of trying to roll the stone back in place. And I find myself back in the tomb. It's only for a while though, for resurrection will not be denied. And like the light, it always overcomes the darkness. It's been said that resurrection is God's final word. I have witnessed the stone rolling away here and there and all because Jesus loves me. I've only two minutes and they've gone already and I haven't scratched the surface. There is a chorus that goes, because he lives, I can face to tomorrow. Surely with the presence of COVID-19, we need to be assured that because he lives, we can face today. And one last thing, thank you for being the resurrection people with whom I share my life. I will see you here and there. God bless you. And our second hymn is All Heaven Declare, All Heaven Declare.
What is resurrection for me? Well, it's the end of the tunnel, isn't it? It's about hope. It is when the one who is addict is clean. The one who is homeless can find a home. The one who can't have a job get an interview. It is when the one who is abused can find a refuge. It is also when a child can read his first sentence or ride his first bike. Resurrection is about hope. Hope when we feel that nothing is possible and suddenly, suddenly little light appeared in the darkness. Resurrection is every day. Resurrection is our life experience. Resurrection is for the refugee when the door of the trucks open. It is for the one who have not been eating for days can see the soup coming to him. It's for the beggar in the street to receive not only money but a smile and recognition. It is every day. Resurrection is what makes us, is what gives us hope. But resurrection is also love, is the presence of God at every time, every moment, at every inch of walking through the tunnel. It's not just the end of the tunnel, the light. It is also the journey in the tunnel. Resurrection is hope, is promise, it's love. That is what he means to me. And our reading today is from Matthew 28. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, reading verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as Sunday morning was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the woman. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised just as he had said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly now and tell his disciples that he has been raised from death. Now he is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see you. Amen. Great to connect with you on this day of days. This is the day which sends a tingle down my spine. This is the day when my heart starts racing. Can it be? crucified one is risen the one who took all humanity's rubbish all its pride jealousy self-seeking and greed took it upon himself on a cross at calvary could it be that this one has conquered even death and has been raised amidst all the loneliness let joy break out Amidst all the fears, let hope break out. Amidst all the lament, let there be a song of hallelujah. I will not despair of this broken world because Christ is risen. I will not fear the future with all its uncertainties. Christ is risen. We have indeed entered into the pain of human suffering this week as we have traveled with Jesus as we have shared in the tragedies brought by this unwelcome virus 
as some of us have experienced deep personal sadness and had our resources stretched to the very limit. We have entered into the pain. And God in Christ has entered into this darkness, this dying, our darkness, our dying, and emerges on this resurrection morning, dancing with life. I hear him saying to me, do not be afraid, peace be with you. And I'm given the strength to choose courage over self-pity. This is resurrection. Nothing that this life throws at us, even death itself is the end. There is a greater truth. Love wins. Love will always win. It's how the universe was built. The twisted, destructive stuff may have its day, but in the end, love wins. Hallelujah. The stone table in the lion, the witch and the wardrobe is broken by the power of love. Let this love of God grip me afresh this morning in the presence of lots that is wrong. Let this love warm each one of us as we hear the rumour afresh, which changes everything. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is Easter Sunday morning, Christ is risen, and our hearts are filled with joy and thanksgiving. Our hearts are filled with joy because of his victory over death, and the promise that brings to us of new life, of fresh beginnings. But in the midst of all these celebrations, it also is for us a time of pain and concern. We're concerned about this world in which we live, a world where there's poverty, environmental degradation, where there's illness and famine and war. For so many people suffering from great hardship. And also it's a time when we remember our own country and the difficulties that we're experiencing just now. With all this in mind, we want to turn to God in prayer. And so let us pray. With great thanksgiving and gratitude, with deep concern for our neighbours near and far, and for ourselves, we turn to you, loving God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. We pray for our world, especially for countries with limited resources and countries where the crisis is most acute. We pray for those involved in peacemaking, healing and caregiving. We pray for our own nation, for all who endanger their lives for the sake of others, in hospitals and care homes, in shops and on the streets, for those who maintain vital services, keeping us safe. We pray for scientists and technicians in laboratories, interpreting test results and searching for vaccines, for those who bear heavy responsibilities, responsibilities in government and the civil service, and for volunteers working in so many different roles, learning new skills, using old ones. We pray for all who are enduring the pain of separation from loved ones, those whose home is a place of danger rather than safety, and for all who help and support those in difficulty. Loving God, in the darkest times, through pathways of illness and depression, grief and death, you come to us. Jesus suffered and died for us. That Easter Sunday morning, the disciples found an empty tomb. Yet in that emptiness, they also eventually found a life of fullness and love and hope. So give us courage, compassion and kindness, that we may share your love, serve others and find within ourselves your peace and joy. 
we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus, our friend and Lord and Saviour. Amen. And now we're going to sing together as we sing number 303. I know that my Redeemer lives, what joy the blessed assurance gives. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And may God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in joy and peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs>